So if you're like me, you're building your home energy solution slowly, bit by bit. I mean, money doesn't grow on trees, so we can't all go out and have a Eddy, a Zappy, some solar panels and a Tesla Powerwall all in one go. So we have to do it in stages. I've drawn out a diagram here to pictorially show, hopefully, how my system is configured at the moment. So from the meter cupboard, we've got the consumer unit, and from that we've got the Eddy and the Zappy. And then over on a separate RCB out of the consumer unit, we've got the inverters for the solar edge array and the solace array. That's my configuration as it is at the moment, before I add a solar storage battery. Adding an Eddy or a Zappy to your configuration when you've got solar panels, that seemed quite easy. I mean, they integrate together, it's understandable, I could see from online articles and videos how it's supposed to work and the difference it would make to me. But thinking about adding a solar storage battery, that seemed quite difficult for me to get my head around. You know, I could read online and I could see videos about people installing it, but that's their configurations and their usage of the system, not how it would relate to me. So I was a little bit apprehensive or confused, shall we say, about the difference it would make to me and how it would change how I use energy and what priorities are available to be set those sort of things, I just couldn't find the detail of what I wanted to know. So today's video, that's what I want to cover. What's it like? How do you add a solar storage battery to your solar configuration with an Eddy and Zappy already? And what difference does it actually make? So configuration wise, let's add the storage battery. Connect a CT to the solar arrays so that the battery is aware of how much solar power you're generating. The battery needs a CT on the mains connection also, so it can see how much import or export there is. And then lastly, we need a CT that connects from the battery to the My Energy solution. Now that can either be on the Eddy, the Zappy, or on a Harvey. The Eddy and the Zappy need to know whether there's a battery in the configuration. If you want to control whether the Eddy and Zappy draws energy from the battery automatically, or whether it can prevent the battery from being drained. What's a Harvey, some people will be asking me. Well, I think of it as a mini hub for CTs. So like you have a mini hub for USB devices when you don't have enough slots, that's what the Harvey's for. It's got some additional CT slots and that communicates wirelessly to your Eddy and your Zappy. And what's a CT, I hear a few more people saying. Well, think of it as a meter. It's a device that connects around a power cable. It's just a magnet. It detects a magnetic field coming from the power cable and it sends data about the power flow from that cable and it sends it down the wire to, in this case, the Eddy, Zappy or battery. And that's all a CT is. It's a measure of the electrical current that's happening on that cable. The My Energy devices, they have their own network, the internal network between the Eddy, Zappy and Harvey if you have one. So wherever you plug a CT into, say I plug it in this case from the battery to the Eddy device, then the Harvey, if you had one, and the Zappy will automatically see the values from that CT. Even though the cable's not plugged into the Zappy, the Zappy will see it. The internal network of the My Energy devices talk to each other and share that CT information. The Harvey is used when you don't have enough physical slots or you can't reach the cable physically from one place to the other. So the Harvey is a hub that you can use to extend the range and also extend the number of slots for your CTs. Once the CT to the battery is connected, you need to configure it. So go to main menu, settings, advanced, enter the passcode, which by default is four zeros, and then enter CT config, and you need to configure CT2 as AC battery. If you're wondering why CT2, not CT1, well, I called my energy and they advised that it went into CT2 in this configuration. And then the battery parameters themselves are so back into advanced, into supply grid, and change the definition of the battery to either avoid charge, avoid drain, or avoid both. I use avoid drain, but I have tried avoid charge. The way that's working is it's stopping the battery from charging, so it's using the energy in the Eddy and Zappy instead. And it's not that it's faster, it's not that it can take priority by making a decision over and above the battery. The way it works is it's just greedy. It grabs more and more energy, and therefore the battery will stop charging because there isn't any more energy to use. In doing so, it uses a bit more grid energy. 
I've found instead if I want the Eddie and Zappy to take priority instead of the battery charging, for example first thing in the morning I do like the hot water heated first ahead of the battery charging, then I can set the grid set point on the battery to be a lower value than the export limit that's on the Eddie and Zappy. And because the battery is then allowing more energy to flow out to the grid by default, it's not going to grab it as soon. It's going to slow the battery down in whether it grabs the solar energy. And by doing that, the Eddie and the Zappy will take it first. And because it's already taken it, there won't be any more available for the battery to charge. And that, for me, means that I can manually define the priorities, and I like that. The only pain with all this sort of configuration is that it's all done in detailed menus or it's done at the actual device. It's not possible to change these priorities very easily without spending time clicking into detailed memories or going out to the actual device, the Eddie or Zappy, and changing them to change, avoid charge, avoid drain, etc. So it's not as easy as you would hope for changing priority. It's more set it once and leave it alone. In an ideal world, yes. The battery would actually be integrated along with the Eddie and Zappy, if only my energy made their own battery as well, so that the three talked to each other seamlessly and you could change the configuration in the app at the front end. That would be a perfect solution in my mind. And with that configuration complete, yes you've got an icon now on your app if you're using the hub and the app, and basically you're ready to go. And lastly, on to expectations. I expected a graph like this, which is showing me consuming solar energy in green and export in yellow and import in red. While I'm heating my hot water and charging my electric car, often with the sun coming and going and clouds going over, you will get some export and you will get some import. So with a battery, I thought it would be soaking that up. So as a cloud goes past and we get less solar energy, then that instantaneous few seconds where it's still charging at the higher rate we're starting to slow down i thought the battery would instantaneously come in and take over and therefore you wouldn't get any grid draw and the same for export i thought that the battery would then soak up any export that was being missed by the eddie and zappy unfortunately not not with this battery at least um, i'm still seeing grid import and i'm still seeing export my thoughts now, having used a solar storage battery, is that the battery is absorbing the large chunks and it's making use of the large chunks without drawing in lots of energy from the grid. But the small bits, the bits that are happening instantaneously in the parts of a second, etc., it's not dealing with those. So we've still got export and we've still got some import. Whether other storage batteries are better than this one, I'm not quite sure, because surely um, inverter technology and the speed of processing in an inverter will be similar between devices, and the same goes for CT clips, etc. So you shouldn't expect all of the grid import to disappear, um, but if you look at this chart here from a day before I installed the solar battery, you can really see the difference that it makes when you install one because the energy used from midnight until six in the morning disappears and the energy also in the evening disappears and those spikes are greatly reduced. And then of course, you've got the almost perfect day where you can consume energy, charge your car, heat your hot water and not use anything at all. On this day, 0.2 kilowatt hours only. Is it better having a storage battery? Absolutely, yes it is. Is it worth it? Well, that depends on you. I think it is, but you'd have to work it out yourself as to whether it is worth it to you to spend the extra money having a storage battery, making your configuration complete, and making it more functional, smoothing those spikes and using less grid energy. As always, thank you so much for watching and sharing these videos. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope there's some useful information there for anyone thinking of adding a storage battery to your My Energy configuration. See you again soon. Bye-bye for now.